Welcome to Homeschool Companion, your source for information, motivation, and inspiration. If you're part of the homeschool community or simply interested in learning more about home-based education, stay tuned. Together we'll examine the latest resources, learning styles, and teaching techniques. We'll speak with experts in the field to help you uncover every homeschool advantage. We'll also present suggestions on how to keep Christ in the curriculum as we explore fresh ways to teach and learn. Here's your homeschool companion host, author, educator, and children's ministry specialist, Dr. Rose Gamblin. Welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you're here with us today. Our devotion is about jellyfish, and you know you've heard that expression that a person who has no backbone is just jellyfish. Anyway, setting the stage, I am reading from the devotional Window on God's World, Jellyfish, and our text is James 1, 6. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. James 1, 6. It is certainly true that jellyfish have no backbones. They are more than 95% water. What is left is a jelly-like substance that forms the only structure of their body. An interesting jellyfish is the Portuguese man of war, which got its name because the English sailors found the light blue creature only when they got as far south as Portugal. It was called man of war after the naval vessels that had many rows of cannons along their sides. The wind controls most of the movements of the Portuguese man of war. That part of it, which is called the sail, may be a foot or more in length and six or eight inches high. When filled with air, it carries the animal along at about 45, at about a 45 degree angle in the direction of the wind. The man of war seems to have some control over the sail because it can inflate it further, deflate it, roll it over, and do a number of remarkable maneuvers. No one knows what mechanism this jellyfish uses to make these adjustments. So while the Portuguese man of war is carried by the wind to distance, to distant waters, it doesn't just go whichever way the wind blows. Most jellyfish do not have sails and are carried by the whims of the sea. They move in a limited way by the pumping action of a muscle under the outer ridge. No real Christian can be a moral jellyfish, for no matter how weak he may have been, when he accepts Jesus Christ into his life, his weaknesses are taken care of. As Paul said, when I am weak, then in Christ I am strong. 2 Corinthians 12.10 when one surrenders to Jesus, he receives power to overcome every weakness. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to, to homeschool. We thank you for the opportunity to choose what, which school our children can go to and for, for providing for them. We also pray for this show that my thoughts will be your thoughts, that as we go through and into the interview that your name will be glorified. Be with us this day. All this I pray in thy holy name. Amen. Ta-da! Arts and crafts. Well, there's quite a few things that you can do with jellyfish. I have put in my Pinterest site a five-minute video on all the interesting facts about jellyfish. It's for kids. And then I have also put on that Pinterest site 28 jellyfish crafts. And I just want to talk about one because I would like for you to be able to do something just listening to this show. And the one I'm going to feature is a paper craft, paper plate jellyfish craft. And the cool thing about this is you can move it and it and the tentacles wiggle. Very simple. Take a plain white paper plate, which you should always have on hand. You should have a big stack of those very cheapy, plain white paper plates. Not the styrofoam ones, but the paper ones that you can paint on. The first day, maybe have, the, have your kids paint an aquatic type of background. It could just be a solid blue, or it could have some other little sea plants or little fish floating in it. They would have so much fun just painting the first part of this craft. And the second part, you take a, 
a piece of construction paper or or the foam I don't know what they call it foam paper and you make a partial oblong that's going to be the head of your jellyfish and you're going to connect some yarn behind it so that when you glue it on or staple it on or scotch tape it onto the paper it stays there and then put two googly eyes so when the child moves the paper plate the yarn tentacles move and so do the googly eyes they will they will be so proud of their jellyfish paper plate you'll just have to hang those up hang stuff from the ceiling hang have a you know a wall that's a brag wall just you know have fun learning curriculum corner so i'm just going to talk about a sweet story time show that uses classic fables and original stories to teach meaning of history american holidays values hard work responsibility it's called either prager you kids or prager anyway let me spell it out for you p-r-a-g-e-r-u dot com prager you or prager you i'm not sure but i ran across it and i thought this would be a great addition to a reading class to a social studies class if you were talking about a certain holiday you could kick it off with their short little video And I would say it's great for ages maybe 4 to 10. Anyway, uh, just as you're thinking of the path, remember a curriculum is much bigger than just the products. You're thinking about the path that you want your children to go on. You can put that in your little valley wagon of uh, possibilities. PragerU. PragerU. P-R-A-G-E-R-U dot com. And as always... I have, I'm not affiliated with any of these curriculum products that I bring to your attention. Questions parents ask. Well, this question is about a seven-year-old boy who is highly sensitive. And she's so concerned because her son doesn't seem to have the emotional connection to connect with his friends. In fact, only once in a while will he even voluntarily give his parents a hug. So she has been worried about how to help him. Well, you know, highly sensitive people are on the spectrum of autism. And while that might sound bad, they're usually very intelligent and maybe just have a awkward, you know, awkward socially. God knows and parents know we we love our children no matter what and it's always great if we can understand them better because we want their lives to be better i have a niece who is that in that highly sensitive spectrum of autism and her mother would actually teach her how to react And even though it was very stilted and it didn't come natural, she did learn how to react in certain social situations so that she could be successful as she became an adult. She's now an adult and she is in occupational therapy and has a life coach and may have that for the rest of her life. Those will help her cope. Love your child. God knows we have so many environmental factors bombarding our children from the time they're conceived that it's amazing any of us turn out at all. So that's my advice on that. I have time for one more question. This question is, has anyone seen Sight and Sound Queen Esther production? Is it appropriate for emotionally young 11-year-olds? I would say absolutely. I took it, I took a whole school of various ages starting from first grade on up to it and just they might not understand all the nuances but it's a very wholesome spiritual show and the emphasis is on God's sustaining power not on all of the other details that Hollywood has tend to focus on so yes my 
my vote is yes. Take your 11-year-old, even though you feel they're emotionally young, take them there. If you have the opportunity, go for it. Our guest today is going to be Benny Deshara, and you'll hear some music throughout the show. For the for this whole week, we're going to feature him in his in his music. So, I'm hoping that you'll enjoy it as much as we did. I want to remind you again that you can go to our homeschoolcompanion.org Facebook page, and in the bottom right hand corner, there's a donate button. And uh, just let me know if that's not working. I don't, you know, I'm of the A, I'm a digital immigrant, so I'm not as good at these kinds of things. We just love people and we just want everyone to have the best homeschooling and to have courage to continue to homeschool. I don't know how many times people want to give up, but I'm going to be interviewing a public school teacher in just a few days who has quit the public school scene and she has so many interesting things to tell you. So it will give you courage to keep keep homeschooling your children. It for sure will. Well, please stay tuned for the second half of the show where we begin our interview with Benny Tashara. We'll be right back. You have been listening to Homeschool Companion, a production of MRG Media. Be sure to join us on Facebook. Just type in the name Homeschool Companion. For more on this or to contact us, go to mrgmediaministries.com. That's all one word, mrgmediaministries.com. Welcome, welcome. I'm here with Benny DeShero. Deshera. 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 And uh, we're going to talk about your music ministry. I'm holding in front of me two D, uh, CDs. Mm-hmm. And one is uh, Soul Cry, Empowered. Mm-hmm. And then the other one is, it says Empowered. It's just such a cool... Three days. Three days. That's our Three latest days. release. Yeah. Three days. And you have a story to tell us, that's for sure. And we're going to listen to some of the excerpts of the music later on in the interview. Okay. So you started in 2021 at the top of the charts again. You know, the word again means that you've done it before. So tell us, you know, set the stage about the first time. It's, it's, you know, people ask about that all the time right? they're like they're, they're like you know and you know what my answer is and probably will always be is if not for god it's it's a god thing when things happen in your life that are bigger than you could ever accomplish on your own it's proof that it's him and and, and i i hope that your listeners press into that right when there's just something phenomenal in your life that you've been praying for or you're looking for and it shows up and you wind up having something happen, that's it. So IndieGospel.net is like an Indie Gospel music site. And so we uh, would hit number one with that for um, Listen to the Children, which is the first single, the first radio single off of Three Days. And then uh, shortly thereafter, we hit number one with... Um, with Three Days, the title track. <laughs> and, and then they just tell me last week that... Uh, that rock bottom which is another song on the same record is at number seven so how do you explain that but god yes. so it's it's but god and and that's our hope is that his message reaches and touches someone who needs to hear it so how can uh, our listeners get this get this music i think get it it like any streaming platform whatsoever that's out there dealing with music, we're on them. Um, and just look up Empowered Three Days. It'll go right to it. And uh, like our website, you can hear some of it through our website as well. Our, rep, our website, I'm going to spell, is R-O-C-K-I-N, the number four, Jesus. So rocking for Jesus. It's pretty easy to remember that way. And we bring a little passion and energy to our music for him because as Christians, shouldn't we be energetic and passionate about him? So it's rockinforjesus.com? That's our website, yes. And the, and it's rockin' is, doesn't Mine, have a G on no it. No G. And it has the number four. Number four. Jesus, rockin' for Jesus. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So... 
tell us a little bit about, you know, you're an artist mm -hmm. and that, that artistic mindset has a different journey than let's say the concrete sequential person. And, and uh, I, you see families, you know, they'll have these children that love to do school and you tell me what to do and I'll do it. And then they have the artist who somehow takes all these serious assignments and turns them into, you know, the, the mother or, or father will just turn around and then they'll look back and they'll see, you know, what they call sometimes a mess. Right. So were you that type of child? I was, uh, I was at my, my preferred first taught instrument was drums. So I was, an, I was the drum captain all through school growing up. And as you can imagine, my mom and dad loved that because <laughs> when there wasn't drumming on the table at home or the countertop, there was drumming on the dashboard in the car or the back of a headrest in the seat. And so it just, it's just... Why'd you stop that? A lot going on. So, but that's, that's neat, you know, because I've been able to take that and I've taught drum lessons to some, some young kids. And, and I've, I've, we always start off with prayer when I would do that. And I'm like, just so that they know that this gift that they have, don't shun it because it's a gift from God. Right. And not everyone gets the opportunity to do what I do. Mm -hmm. And and it's we're in a select number, right? And so and then as you grow older and as I do now and I write my own songs and, and they're original and I tell people all the time, I really don't write them. I I basically transcribe what God is saying. And, um, but there's a, there's a gifting in that, that we have to learn to be appreciative of if we aren't already. Listen to your children. Mm. You know, that's a great title. Yeah. Listen to your children. Yeah. So that song, uh, man, the world right now is lying to our kids in a profuse way. And it used to just be maybe through TV or something like that, but now it's through everything. It's even through schools. Mm -hmm. And so the basic premise, you know, you don't have to be this way. You can be that way. Do not be who God made you. By the way, who's God? That type thing. Mm -hmm. So the basic premise of the song is, and, and this was the first radio single that we had from the new record. If, if we would listen to the children, if we would listen to our kids, they will tell us what the world's telling them. And it opens up a dialogue that we can have with our kids, right? To say, this is what we stand on. These are the biblical principles that our family adhere to. You are fearfully and wonderfully made, and we can combat some of what the world's trying to tell them. So it's been I'd fun like, to do. Yeah, I'd like to hear, or I'd like to know some of the lyrics of that song, Listen to Our Children, because I think, you know, Jesus says, except ye become as little children. Mm -hmm. So he actually is commanding us to do that. Yeah. So what are some of your lyrics in that song? The chorus for it, the chorus for it is, listen to the children, hear what they're saying. Listen to the children, know what they're praying. Don't stand around and to where they can come back together to you and and tell you what the world is saying if we would just listen to the children so it's fairly direct you know i had a, i had a brain injury five and a half years ago and just mm, i'm a dangerous man right now because i'm moving with purpose in my mission mm -hmm. that god's given me and so so i've always been very direct in my lyrics since the inception of the band since i gave my life to christ and said i'm going to give you my music as well um but since the injury and walking away from an unknown certainty, an unknown mm -hmm. future, I'm much more direct. Now you're about talking it. about an injury. How did that happen? Yeah, that was in 2015. And, and uh, long story short, fell, as fell asleep on my sofa and my alarm went off the next day in the bedroom with my wife. So, you know, I knew I was in trouble there because I'm a guy. And um, she came out of the bedroom with the phone extended to me, and I have a 20-minute gap and don't remember a thing. So she tells the neurosurgeons, I'd gone over to our hardwood floor section of our living room. When she handed me the phone, I was horizontal, did not slip, did not trip, did not have socks on, floor wasn't wet, did not catch myself at all. And I just dropped to the floor. And when the back of my head hit the floors, um, it sounded like a gunshot, she said. So mm. um, I was still conscious. 
and I crawled over to the to the uh, recliner on my hands and knees and and she said don't do that come lie down I got in the bed and um I'll tell you like after 10 I'm a navy medic in Mm -hmm. my past life and all that training from years and years ago when I was a young guy just came just came back and 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 just the room was spinning the nausea Mm -hmm. those things and 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 I say that because and this could be for one of your listeners when we do things in our past even when they're not in line with what God has in store for us, he uses that for us. Yes. And for the sake of having the knowledge of what was going on medically with me, I knew enough to tell my wife, we've got to go yes. to the hospital. So she, she sort of walked me to the car. We went in. CT scans, MRIs, way too many. I can't tell. I should be able to see through everything. <laughs> and... um just ICU. So I had a double fracture in the back of my skull, a frontal lobe crush. So to this day, I've got zero taste and zero smell, mm. but we're here talking. Amen. Yeah, so yeah, I'm good yes, with that. Yes. And, um, and I had an internal brain bleed. So I didn't bleed externally. So I could only bleed internally and I bled out through the whole left side of my mm. face. And so three days it was a day in intensive care, several days of observation, and the doctors told me, we're releasing you home, but you're going to shut down. Yeah. The brain shuts itself down. So the first month I was home, I stayed in a recliner for three months. The The first month, 20 hours a day, I was sleeping. Mm. And every three hours, my wife became a full-time RN, and it was like, Powerade, a little bottle of Insure, and meds, and I would just. And sometimes I, I believe because I don't, can't remember. I think I took them in my sleep. It, it mm-hmm. was like that, and nobody knew if I was coming out of that, you mm. know. But God, yes. Well, we have to conclude the first part of this interview. But when we come back tomorrow, I want to pick up where we left off. I have so many questions. So, listeners, we are talking to Benny. Deshara. He is, you can learn more on the website Rockin' for Jesus, and it's the number four.com, rockingforjesus.com. And we're talking about his two CDs. The first one was Soul Cry Empowered, and the second one is Three Days Empowered. And he's already hit the top of the chart, so you might want to go on any streaming device, any streaming service has access to that music so we're gonna take a we're gonna say goodbye and say how much i love you thank you for listening i have one last thing to say and that is god bless thank you so much for spending this time with us and remember if you want to contact me you can always send an email to mrg media ministries you can go to our facebook page i have a my own facebook page which is rose gamblin If you ask to be my friend, please say you are a listener because I might not, you know, reciprocate if I just think you're someone that happened upon my site. Or you can go to MRG Media Facebook page and message me through that. Or you can go to Homeschool Companion Facebook page and message me through that. So there's quite a few ways you can get a hold of me. Our address, if you... uh, would like our address is P.O. Box 413 Smithsburg, Maryland. That's MRG Media Ministries, P.O. Box 413 Smithsburg, Maryland. Well, I have one last thing to say, and that is God bless. You have been listening to Homeschool Companion, a production of MRG Media. Be sure to join us on Facebook. Just type in the name Homeschool Companion. For more on this or to contact us, go to mrgmediaministries.com. That's all one word, mrgmediaministries.com.